We're going to start with the at-large candidates, and Deanne, you're going to be first. Um, question number three is, what is your vision for downtown Olathe, and how does it fit into your overall vision for Olathe? Olathe's downtown area should be known for more than just city and county government, law offices, and old settlers. That's typically what everybody thinks of when they hear of downtown Olathe. Attracting people to that area outside of the business hours is really the key. Bringing small businesses, artists, galleries, locally owned restaurants, <clears throat> distinctive retail shops, and building on the success of First Fridays can enhance and entice visitors to come to the downtown area and create a, re a residential renaissance that will boost the area. Once you have that heart of the city maintained, you can build the city from there. Great, thanks, Dan. All right, Tori, you're up. Ah, thank you. Does that sign say 10 minutes? This is, <laughs> <laughs> this is a big question, right? So I'd love to see a thriving downtown, uh, but there's, there's lots of challenges. We got the trains, we got the traffic that backs up behind them, we got pedestrian movement, uh, we got uh, uh, a low diversity of types of businesses. Um, we need to beautify the area more. Um, lots of uh, vacancies in the buildings, actually, downtown right now. Uh, we went to look for a building, and uh, there's a lot of them opened up, and, and they're pretty cheap. So it's, it's, it, we need a reason to be downtown, right? I'm all in favor of that. Um, the greatness is it's, it's historic, so we can build upon that. A lot of uh, cities around the area want that type of feel. Uh, it's a mix of zoning. Um, and it is a place for government uh, to go. I mean, we know as, as a government place with the, with the courthouse coming on board here uh, real soon, I think we'll have to take a look at that and uh, revisit that whole um, piece. Thanks, Troy. All right, Jason, your turn. When I was a kid, um, downtown Olathe basically consisted not just of the area around the courthouse and the, well, this was the Patrons Bank building at the time, but it, uh, what would become City Hall, but it extended from the railroad tracks just to our west all the way down to where the Walmart was, now where the uh, Goodwill store is uh, on Santa Fe. And Santa Fe was always called by my sister, who was a few years older than me, uh, as the main drag through town. Uh, cruising the Fe is how my mom used to put it. And I think we need to adapt a larger view of the downtown area, not just the area around the city and county government buildings. Uh, if we can extend the beautification that's taken place around this area, which quite frankly has been very nice, uh, we repurposed some old buildings and taken some of the older buildings down and repurposed them for green spaces in this area. If we can extend that to the retail areas that are just to the east and help find ways to try and uh, redevelop the corn, especially the intersection at uh, Ridgeview and uh, Santa Fe, which uh, is not exactly the geographic center of town, but it feels more like the, uh, the close to the center of town to me. Um, if we can find a way to try and extend that uh, view of downtown, then I think we'll, uh, we'll basically solve our problems for ourselves. We'll give ourselves more room to work, basically, than what we have currently. Thank you, Jason. All right, Karen, you'll be the last in this district. Thank you, Natalie. I think we do have a challenge because we have so many government buildings down here. And that makes it difficult to work on that balance of, uh, we, in the life of we wanted to grow our commercial tax base, we want to grow our private sector tax base. So when you have a lot of government buildings in one area, it's a bit of a challenge. So as the new courthouse is built and comes online, I think there will be opportunities to encourage private sector growth that would be servicing that building. You know, whether it's a new office building or whether it's um, eateries and things like that. I have been fascinated by some of the small businesses in downtown that have created a synergy of working together. Rather, even though they may be competing as businesses, they work together to promote each other all boats rise. I think those practices are tremendous. Another thing is to look at redevelopment. And because we do have some older areas, what do we need to consider as far as TIF and abatements to try to encourage those older areas to be redeveloped in a quality manner? 
um, I think that will be something for the city council to grapple with. Thank you, Karen. All right, we're going to move to Ward 3. And Wes, you're going to be the first one up. Do you need me to repeat the question, or are you good? No, I think I, can. I have it. OK. Let me get a speaker on. This is an exciting part of the whole deal, okay? Because some of the things that we've envisioned for some time is the fact that uh, the libraries will create new maker space, that you can have entrepreneurs come in there and maybe we have a two-story library instead of the current library. Or maybe we have the space there, the entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, we can bring them in and have them so they can have a startup there. We would have new housing downtown that you would have, so something like you saw in the Gulch and, and they are, they're in Nashville where maybe you have you have the condos up above where the people that work at Garmin and work around here, where the young folks, instead they want to buy a house, they have a place to stay. And then you have the boutique shops that open up down below. And we have trails that connect from Mid-American Azure University on over to downtown community center, connecting on down to uh, Olathe Medical Center, on over to Garmin and back over to the Olathe Lake that we're going to be developing there on Olathe Lake and Cedar Lake where we have a 10 miles around there. So we're going to need to do some things also with the the new Mill Creek Center that the, the high school has put in. And one of the things we could do is bring in concerts once a month out, out of Nashville. Bring the entertainment folks in here that we would draw people on the weekends, just like we did last week at the community center where we had over 2,500 people come to a concert there that we supported here in our community. So we would need to do the things that's going to attract folks, and you would have the new boutique shops that would start up versus thinking about always the big a company that's out there as a franchise, but that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wes. All right, Alan. Is it wrong to say ditto? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much everything that's been said, I'm going to probably say in a different way, shape, or form. Um, to renovate downtown, I view it as we need to look at taking those bu buildings that are in existence and turn them into multi-purpose buildings. Again, the lots up on top, a business down on the bottom creates two things. Number one, it creates a shopping environment for the people. And number two, it creates, in, uh, it creates a built-in shopping clientele. People shop where they live. So if you have the right mix of businesses in downtown and you have the people living downtown, it's a synergistic situation. So if we turn it into a focal point, we get the right mix of restaurants, shops, delis, antique stores, jewelry stores, something that truly fits the mold of what we want to have down there, then it's going to make it a destination and people from around the area as well as inside Olathe are going to go. Um, mixing old style and current style shops. I've never been to an old style soda pool. I think it'd be cool to have one. That's just my own two cents on that one. Um, doing all of this will fill in shuttered shops the vacancies will end, and we can get some businesses in place. It'll maintain the historical value of some of those buildings. And also, it'll bring in residents, which will bring in property tax, sales tax, and general revenue through that area. Great. Thanks, Alan. All right, Anthony, you're up. But I want to make sure your mic is on. They had a little trouble hearing you in the back of the room. And if not, I have a handheld I can give you. Thank you. Um, the vision for downtown, our vision for downtown needs to be supported by the Olathe City Council and all of our citizens. Downtown is vital to the economic vitality of Olathe. When I'm on the City Council, I will work towards minimizing sprawl, <coughs> capitalize on the uniqueness of Old Town, Olathe, work towards reinventing the area with a mix of retail, housing, restaurants, and entertainment. I will advocate for restoring and maintaining historic buildings and homes and work towards developing new housing and businesses based on keeping in line with the historic flavor of the area. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Anthony. And Adam, you're up. You know, what we're hearing are all great ideas, and I think we all kind of want the same thing, and so I'm going to be another very loud voice that says, we all want a beautiful downtown. We all want to maintain buildings. We want commerce. We want small businesses. We want them to thrive. We want spots for people to come to. So I'm not telling you anything that hasn't already been said. I think it's great that we all sort of agree. Um, one of the big differences is being someone who works with a small company in a business like a restaurant. I have experience in that field, and I will take that with me to the council. I will approach it the same way I approach the restaurant I work in now, and I think I can be a huge voice for those entrepreneurs. And I think I can help them flourish, and I think we can definitely, definitely help increase revenue in this town, bring more folks, 
and also continue to encourage more and more and more folks to come downtown. We all want a beautiful Olathe. There's no question about that. I think anybody that would sit up here and question that is, is crazy. We all want a beautiful downtown. So um, I think that that sort of experience is what we need on this council. And I can bring that to the table. Great. Thanks, Adam. All right, we're going to move to word four. We're going to talk about cookies and donuts again. You're making me cookies and donuts. <laughs> um, Marge, you, you are first on this one. All right, thank you. Well, I, I think all of us will agree that we want our downtown to be a sense of place. We want it to be active. We want it to be vibrant with businesses that really will enjoy the support of the public entities downtown. We're talking many employees between the county and the city, and when they go for lunch, you know, they're going to enjoy the restaurants. When they need to go purchase something at a specialty retail shop, they're going to be able to stay right within the downtown area. Um, so I see that that our businesses or restaurants that come to the downtown area will benefit from all the public entities. Um, currently, we are updating the downtown master plan, and it is a phenomenal group, and it is a mixed group uh, in terms of our older generation, some of our younger uh, generation, and the millennials. And the kinds of things that they want are what we're talking about, <laughs> a sense of place. They want varied housing. They look forward to the expansion of the library and more community space. They want a gathering space, not only for residents, but drawing from the metro and from beyond. And I think we're off to a good start. We've got the city investments with the streetscape project, public spaces with art and water features, the county investment of $200 million for the building, and a plan for the expansion of the library. Um, and we continue to work more and more in how we can make the downtown a better place. Thank you. All right, Jason, you're up. Um, I agree. We've got challenges with the, with there's limited space, and, and when you think of downtown Olathe, you think of government. Um, and I think we need to move beyond that. I, when I think of, of some of the downtowns that I have most enjoyed in, in different cities, you've got that combination of the shops below and, and housing above. Um, and I think to echo what Wes is saying, you've got a built-in uh, consumer when you've got them living above your shop. So I think we, we definitely need to um, look at redevelopment of buildings, uh, keeping in mind we want to maintain the historical nature of those buildings. Uh, we want to expand upon the beautification program to try to tie that all together. Um, and then we want to look at bringing in a nice mixture of businesses that's going to attract diverse uh, groups of people coming there. It's going to bring new job opportunities um, and help expand uh, the economy and bring historical downtown back to life. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Jason.